It is a very, very lovely morning. Something's happening this morning. Um, there's a truck showing up and it's here to grab something from our farm. Because of you guys, bee spines being taken away. It is going to the Farm Progress Show 2021. Blows my mind. I mean, what's special about it? I'm gonna just kind of let you into a little secret. Not much at all. There really isn't much different than any other 8250, 8230, sorry. Anyways, that being said, we need to take these tires off the combine. They're way too wide to transport this thing all the way down there. If you keep them on, you're gonna have to have a flagger, which means a car behind the big truck or ahead of the truck to make sure that people know that there's a wide load coming down the road. If we take these off, put some singles on it, it'll go on the trailer and it'll be within reason to um, meet DOT standards. So let's move this combine and uh, get it uh, ready for transport because I think that's what we need to do. Now, because it was a little too wide with the ladder extension, that whole deck up there, we had to remove part of it and then shove it inside the combine so that way it's within width. But uh, this sucker here is ready to be on a truck and get shipped off. Man, those things look wussy with those single duels on there. <laughs> wow. Big tires make something look a lot bigger. Okay, just temporary transport, just for transport. Well, we will see that combine in about a week and a half. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. About, about a week and a half. half. Yep. Just barely over a week. It's Monday, so we'll be there. Yeah. Two yeah. In one week. All right, and then we're gonna take out shell corn with it. <laughs> well, I'm back in the saddle again. Actually, I'm on the red seat, the hot seat. Anyway, yes, a uh, number of things have been going on. Uh, we're back at harvesting the last little bit, probably the last fifths of the harvest or less. Um, I am just start cutting the barley, as you can see. I cut a field yesterday and it probably made about five. It got really burned up. This one here is doing better. It's, uh, it's up to about 10 right now. Um, so a little more respectable, but yes, a lot of things are going on. Uh, by the time you watch this, uh, we'll probably have been to the farm show down in uh, Decatur, Illinois, uh, and, and had uh, opportunity, great opportunity to meet all those who are able to come to the show. Just trying to get the dynamics right now together because with that rain that we received about two and a half weeks ago, um, just caused a horrendous uh, onslaught of uh, kosher weeds. 
broadleaf weeds and uh, it's bad. So we, we, we have to go out and we've got to spray it out so that we can preserve the moisture, preserve the nutrients, and then look at getting some winter wheat uh, part, uh, planted. So we're only using one combine because we sent beast vine off to the show. I know a number of you probably wonder why are you sending your combine off right during harvest? Well, uh, Tight Tire wanted to have that to represent uh, the history that they've had with us as well as some other uh, farm equipment that's going to be there. And because it's iconic, we're also to the last part of our harvest, so I'm going to probably in three days here I'll cut most of all the barley that it wasn't hailed and after that it's just chew on a few acres. So we're really down to the last of our harvest. Um, plus, we really need to spray, and so that's going to take two people. So there's just the three of us, so there's going to be two sprayers going, then one will have to stop and uh, get more water and, and get stuff around so that they can keep spraying. I'm going to be filling the truck with barley. That will need to be unloaded. Uh, so there really wasn't an opportunity anyway to run another combine. So I can get this harvested um, by the time we're ready to go to the show. So that's not going to be an issue, but it has caused a lot of work, uh, a lot of stress. And uh, But we're going to get it done. We'll get as much done as we can. Uh, there's not a lot of bushels sitting out here because of the drought. Um, so I'll get most all of the good barley knocked off. The rest of it, I, you know, we might cut on it and find out that it's only making one. So I see I have a grain, a full grain tank. Uh, that's the second one in this field. That's doing twice as good as what it was on the other field. So anyway, I'm going to keep you informed uh, for the last of our harvest while I uh, sit with uh, Kobe. Kobe, want to say hi? Yeah, he's uh, always interested in riding on a combine. There was some um, white-tailed deer down here at the bottom, and boy, did he want to be let out. He wanted to go make friends with the, them, and I just told him, why don't you just write him a deer, deer letter? All right, we'll catch you in the next commercial. <coughs> you see a rabbit again? All right, go get it. All right, and the race is on. I think uh, someone has got a lot bigger hop to his step than the other one. Oh, what an, what an afternoon for Kobe. Two rabbits within 15 minutes. That's called rabbit fire, isn't it? This is the first load of barley. And we start thinking about it with how many acres I got hailed out and it's not really producing a lot. We thought about putting it in a small bin, but then we're like, you know, we have an extra bin over here, the big West Steel, well, smaller but bigger one, and we decided to just dump it on there. It's got the floor aeration, and we'll see how much we can put in there, but I'm guessing maybe 5,000 bushels, maybe more, it's hard to say. With that being said, I'm gonna start this tractor. Actually, I'll just start it now, let it warm up. And then go over and open the lid to the bin. Place the auger in. Ah, oh, there we go, it's running. barley. 
I'm going to show you a little bit uh, in front of the combine. If you can tell, do you see the the different color, the lighter colored um, yellow, gold versus the darker. That darker that you see there, it didn't develop its full head. It dried out before it could even develop a head to start producing bar barley kernels. The crop that has a little bit of the lighter color, that is developed heads as much as possible with the low rainfall. So I'm cutting along here and it varies uh, when you finally get out of the light colored and you get a lot of the dark, I get down to two, two bushels. Right now I'm doing about five. So yeah, the drought really takes a toll. It's only about, I'd say, tip is maybe a foot high. We're cutting down, <clears throat> leaving about three to four inches. I'm cutting fairly close to the ground, trying to watch out for rocks. Um, but uh, it's uh, you know kind of a tough time to uh, to have to harvest and see this you know the potential was there beautiful stand it came up but it just couldn't finish out and one rain would have made a huge difference um, the rain in probably the last part of June would have probably made 20 25 bushels more just kind of give you an idea of the color change so that's where I'm getting the bushels is just from the light color the darker colored there is no kernels rabbit or a deer antelope he knows those words Nick's spraying dad's in Clifford he's uh, chopping some barley and we decided while they're doing that and I'll kind of shuttle trucks every once in a while we need to go deep rip some manure because it's all packed from those trucks uh, spreading it and packing it and we need to rip it up and then we need to get our plow and uh, chop up all the weeds and till it in. Pretty sure this thing needs to work today. Sweet. Grease the tractor, topped it off with fuel, and put a little Case IH oil in it because the engine needs a little bit extra uh, sweating power because it likes to sweat a lot of 1540 out of the engine. Um, a lot of leaky seals. Let's not talk about that. Anyways, we're ready to go, so let's go deep rip. This 600 Big Bud is really getting put to the test. The zone builder from Underfirth, it's pulling hard. It's pulling really hard. And I'm going down probably about, um, about a foot down is what I'm going. So it's not like ridiculous, but it's, it's some. 
But here's the thing, why it's pulling so hard is because we got like three inches of rain and the ground is still kind of muddy, but our soil's got clay in it and it turns into muck and it gets sticky. So it is really pulling that zone builder, like it's, it's sticking it to the ground, which means the tractor is just peeling out 24 seven. Well, I don't want to raise it out of the ground because I want to stay at that depth to keep on ripping that little bit of a hard pan. So what I'm doing is I set the GPS so that way I overlap two shanks over here. So I can actually let the shanks run freely in these already ripped. And then the rest of it over here is running into virgin ground and it's ripping. And that way I can get enough traction to keep pulling at that depth and ripping it. The tractor's got the power, but the traction is the problem that I have right now. So anyways, this thing is pretty stellar. Yesterday I wasn't able to finish that field. Uh, I had to stop the tractor, bring it back to the shop so I could get a truck and dump it. And, uh, and then it was a little late. So I gotta head back out to the field and keep ripping it. But this thing is a beast. And I have snagged some pretty good sized rocks and uh, it's ripping them out of the ground. So that, that's, that's a neat feeling to know that we're gonna be able to take some of those rocks and remove them. So we don't deal them in the future. But uh, yeah, let's use this underfirth and um, zone build that uh, land over there. Let's get busy guys. Big bud time, yeah, right? Big bud time. plow up to the shop so I can go through and find out what needs to be fixed because there's a few things for example the bushing right here is completely gone so got to pull that out and see if I have one on the shelf I think I do but I'm not entirely sure about that and then I got to look at all the other joints that's around here this thing has got so many different pivot points and flexes and it's amazing how they designed it because it's able to flex through the fields but that means there's a lot of wear, wear points. So, go through, check tires, check joints, make sure everything's good, see if there's any bolts or shanks or things that need to be tightened up. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a long process, but it's gotta be done. So let's first tackle that joint right here and see if I can find something that'll work. If not, I have to order something. Hopefully I don't have to order it. Hopefully I have it. Okay, let's get back to business. Now that it's removed, looking at it, it doesn't look too good, does it, guys? Um, that's gonna be a challenge for me to try to make it true again. I'll have to build it up with weld and then try to figure out a way of drilling a nice, clean, smooth hole because the bushing that goes in there needs to be perfect. It probably won't look like factory, but I know I can make it work. The bolt that goes through it doesn't look too much better either. Now this here, I can build up on weld, turn it down the lathe, and this is not as crucial of a bolt compared to the rest of the plow. It's on the outside wing. So if I build it up with weld and turn it down, it's not gonna break. Now, if it was in the center of the plow where it takes a lot more abuse, I probably wouldn't do that. I'd probably go find a new bolt and put it in. Here's the bushing for it. That's, all, that's the only thing that's left. But I started looking around and, um, Found another couple parts on here that needs to be addressed. For one, here's a major pin. As you can tell, it's uh, kind of wore down too. I can build that up and turn it down the lathe. Uh, that'll be fine. 
what it does is it's the pivot point for the wheels to go up and down that's the main support so when you set your depth down in the ground and you're tilling that arm controls that up and down well the bushing has gone on it now i do have two bushings to put in there so that'll be fine the pipe inside is kind of doesn't look that great but i'll put a bushing inside and see how much slop and if it doesn't look too bad i might just run it um because to cut that out and put a new piece of pipe in and try to get all trued up and weld it all up and it's going to take time and i just need to get this around so i can till up 80 acres maybe 100 acres in some areas depending on what i need to chill up but not a whole lot and then we can address it later and usually when we say that five years down the road then we address it later so to the home. 